divisible with liberty and justice for all. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you have given us for such a wonderful God. everybody, this is Katie with Homeschooling for His Kingdom. And today I have some information for you about the Feast of Trumpets, or it's also known as Rosh Hashanah. I don't know if any of you out there um, have a Jewish background or are Jewish, um, but this is a festival that the Jewish nation celebrates every single year. And um, as a believer in Christ, I also have realized its importance and I celebrate it every year now with my family. Um, I have rather young children still in elementary school and my channel is mostly for homeschool material. Today I want to show you how I incorporate this festival into the education of my children and why the festival is important um, along with several other festivals in the Jewish culture. Um, so I wrote a lot of it down because I didn't want to get sidetracked um, and some of it's detailed. So I wanted to give you guys the best opportunity to understand it clearly. So you'll have to forgive me, but I'll be reading quite a bit today, but I hope that it's clear that way. So let's start at the beginning. Um, if you're not aware of any of the Jewish feasts or festivals, that's what I wanna to touch on first. There are seven of them, and they're called Holy Convocations to the Lord. And the Lord has asked the Jews and uh, today believers in Christ, if they'd like to join, um, he enjoys it when we remember these seven festivals. Um, he asked the Jews to celebrate these important dates in special ways every year so that his people would not forget what he said and what is coming next. Um, in Jesus' first coming to earth as the Lamb of God over 2,000 years ago, he actually fulfilled the first four to the day, even the hour. Um, in very specific ways. So every year these seven festivals rotate through the year like we have, you know, Christmas, Easter, all of that. Well, a lot of these are reflections. Some of them are reflections of the actual Jewish feast. So the first spring feast is called Passover. And of course that comes around Easter. Um, it is regarding the Passover lamb and what is a picture of Jesus's crucifixion. The next one is unleavened bread. As the Jews uh, would remove leaven from their bread, this was a picture of how Jesus removed sin from the whole earth at his death on the cross. The third feast is called First Fruits, and the priest would gather the very first barley harvest that was ready as a picture of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, being the very first resurrection from the dead in Christ. The fourth feast is called Pentecost, and that is the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon the church. And so those four feasts have actually taken place about 2,000 years ago already, but they're still in the calendar and we still celebrate them. And I celebrate them with my family every year. Those four happen in the spring. The first three are in the spring and the fourth one is a little bit later. That one is closer to the summer, that's Pentecost. But those four have already been fulfilled in Jesus' first coming. What we want to focus now then is on the last three feasts and those come up every year in the fall and those are still dress rehearsals for what is to come. In, in Jesus' second coming as the Lion of Judah and the King of Kings, he will fulfill the last three festivals very specifically and we believe to the very day. And that is why it's so important to celebrate these feasts to remember what Jesus did in the spring, but also looking forward to what he's going to do in the fall feasts. Even Paul the Apostle in Colossians 2, 16 to 17 mentions these festivals and celebrations as a shadow of things to come. Okay, so what are the four fall feasts then? Or excuse me, the three fall feasts. The first one in the fall is called the Feast of Trumpets, and that's what I wanna talk about today. It's somewhat hidden, with assembling of believers and blowing of the shofar. It is a picture of the rapture being somewhat hidden and the believers being assembled and taken to heaven at the last trumpet sound. And I'll touch on all of that a little bit more. Let me finish the last two feasts in the fall. The second fall feast is called Day of Atonement and that's the judgment of sins. And the last feast is called Tabernacles, the remembrance of all good things God has done for us. 
This one is special too because God will reinstate this festival during the millennial reign and we will celebrate it year after year in the New Jerusalem. You can find this in Zechariah 14, 16 to 21. But let's go back to the Feast of Trumpets. That's what's coming next. That one actually we're going to be celebrating sunset September 18th through sunset September 20th of 2020. Okay, so where do we first find the Feast of Trumpets? Katie, where are you even coming from? Okay, Leviticus 23, 23 to 25. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, On the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of Sabbath rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blast. Do no regular work, but present a food offering to the Lord. And you notice it said the seventh month, but the Jewish calendar rotates differently than ours. So this usually falls in September. It's actually called Tishri 1. The Feast of Trumpets starts on the Jewish, Jewish month of Tishri 1, and it lasts for two days, Tishri 1 and 2. The feast requires the sighting of a new moon, and then the sighting had to be reported to the priests. Because of the uncertainty of when exactly this will occur, it is celebrated over two days. So the Jews were ready to celebrate in the fall every year, but did not quite know when the festival would start, so it's a bit hidden. So they were extra ready around the new moon, even though they didn't know the day or the hour the new moon would be spotted. So. To this day, no one knows the day or the hour Jesus is going to return. You can find that in Matthew 24, 36. But the Bible does say he will return. And he says that we actually, as believers in Christ, should know the signs and the seasons, not the day or the hour, but we should know the, t the seasons and the signs of his return. You can find that in Matthew 24, 32. Just like the Jews knew the season of the Feast of Trumpets, so they were prepared around the Feast of Trumpets. In fact, the Bible says we should know the signs and the seasons as it gets closer, and you can find this in 1 Thessalonians 5. Based on how Jesus has already fulfilled the first four of his holy convocations or festivals to the day and the very hour, it is my belief and many others that Jesus will return on the Feast of Trumpets some year. We don't know the year. Many Jews and myself and my family are extra ready and prepared around that time every year. Still skeptical? Okay, listen. Here's the connection. During the Feast of Trumpets, God is asking the body of Christ to assemble and blow a shofar. Now, here is the most obvious scripture regarding the rapture. Listen, see if you can get the connection. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 to 18. Here it is. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, and that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep or dead in Christ. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So we see a trumpet of God and the assembling of believers. The dead in Christ first and those who are remaining will be assembled together. The Feast of Trumpets this year will be sunset September 18th through sunset September 20th. Do I think Jesus is coming back this year? Maybe, but probably not. Here's why. I know the season hasn't arrived yet from other scripture. Listen. In Joel 2 and in Acts 2, it says, There will first be a last day's outpouring of the Holy Spirit's power, and God's glory will come upon the bride and the church. So see, that's why it's super important to know the season as well. I can see the outpouring and the glory has started in many of the believers, and it is coming, but there will be much more. There will be signs, wonders, miracles, like the early church. Then the huge harvest of souls will come in. Then we can look for the rapture around the Feast of Trumpets. But meantime, let's keep celebrating. It's a dress rehearsal. That's why Jesus instated it. He wanted us to be ready for these. That's why he called them holy convocations. He didn't want his people to forget what's coming. You say, okay, well, how does a Christian family celebrate a Jewish holiday? Glad you asked. <laughs> Just check with your brothers and sisters in Christ, your Jewish brothers and sisters. And here's what I've found. 
My family and I have been celebrating these festivals for several years now. Each year I take a look at what the Jewish um, customs are, what they eat, how they celebrate, and then we do our best to incorporate that in our house. Some of my friends have even been able to go to Jewish synagogues to see in person how they celebrate. So that's an option too if you have a local synagogue. Um, but here's a list of eight things I like to do for the Feast of Trumpets and how to incorporate that in your classroom or with your family time. First of all, buy, buy a shofar. Um, and here's mine. I wanted to show it to you. It's a ram's horn. And uh, I don't know if you can kind of see it. Yeah. Um, and so that's the very first thing I would say is buy a shofar and blow it. <laughs> um, and then I let every family member or for having if another family over to celebrate as well. We let all the kids try blowing it. Of course, you know, wipe it down in between blowing, of course, but um, it's hard to blow. So uh, have a good time and practice. Um, so those are my first two. Buy a shofar. Second is practice blowing it. Third, um, I find a YouTube video or a clip of an actual rabbi or someone blowing the shofar well. You can blow it and then you can blow it well. Um, that way the family can see how the rabbis or how it was really meant to sound. It's astounding, it's amazing uh, when you hear it blown really well. Um, number four, and this one's really fun. My kids love this one. We make shallow bread and we braid it before we bake it. And this, uh, we basically get the whole table cleaned or counter and give a little portion of the dough to each child. They can knead it out and then they braid it. And then what we do is we take the braid and we make a crown with it and then put it on the cookie sheet. And the crown is to represent the soon incoming king. Again, because this is to celebrate Jesus coming as the king of kings. So the children get to make a crown with bread. Another one is apples dipped in honey. Um, and this would be because Rosh Hashanah or Feast of Trumpets is celebrated as the Jewish New Year. Although it's the seventh month, you can look up the history. Some people select it as the beginning of the year anyway. They call it the head of the year. So this is to treat you as why, so this is to treat each other wish, with a wish for a sweet new year. That's the apples dipped in honey. Um, pomegranates, number six, one of the seven species of Israel and it has been called the new fruit of the new year. So you can get some pomegranates and enjoy those. Um, number seven, you can eat heads of things. That's what they enjoy doing um, at some of the Jewish uh, feasts. Uh, fish, uh, specifically for a Feast of Trumpets. Um, fish, sheep's head, cabbage head, garlic head. Uh, taken from the Bible verse in Deuteronomy 28, 13a, it says, and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. You can fold these items into other recipes too, if that's easier to have them on the table. And then finally, number eight, I print coloring pages in advance of shofars, apples with honey, um, braided bread, whatever you can find online or in books. Um, and that way I can provide that for the children while I read. I give the coloring pages to the children while, while I reread the history of the feast and um, it gives them something to do, especially the younger ones. Um, and then when we're done with our coloring pages, then we usually go on to make the bread and so forth and, so, and continue the celebration. I hope these ideas have helped you. Um, and let's keep on praying for one another as the day approaches. And please join us this year if you feel led in celebrating the Feast of Trumpets. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.